Hello and welcome to On Scene with Tampa Fire Rescue. I'm Fire Chief Dennis Jones. Most of the alarms that Tampa Fire responds to involve structure fires, car accidents, or medical emergencies. But another type of emergency that can have a long-ranging impact on the community and the environment is the release of hazardous materials. Today we're going to join a team of firefighters as they train to handle these hazardous materials emergencies. We're in the Port of Tampa with a group of firefighters from both Tampa and Pinellas County who have just finished up a four-week training class on how to deal with hazardous materials incidents. Now this scenario is kind of the culmination of all their training for the past four weeks. We're going to join Captain Jerry Weaver, who's the lead instructor for this program, and find out what these students have learned and what they're doing here today for this final scenario. In a real situation, our chemical suits are designed to protect virtually any chemical that we come in contact with here in the city of Tampa, whether it be ammonia, chlorine gas, uh, or even many unknown chemicals. Uh, we have a suit that will, will protect us from uh, virtually almost any chemical. Uh, you might see some of the silver suits that uh, afford us some flash protection uh, if we happen to go in any type of flammable in, uh, environment. Uh, it's not a preferred uh, suit to have in there, but it will give us a little bit of, of, of extra protection over the orange and the blue suits. Yes, uh, City of Tampa firefighters are trained to an operations level of hazardous, material, hazardous materials response. Uh, what that allows them to do is to do defensive operations, uh, to shelter in place uh, individuals, potential victims, notify the hazmat team of a potential problem, and, uh, and basically just to call for resources uh, should those needs arise. But they're not trained, the operations level are not trained to go into a hazardous chemical environment to mitigate that. That's where the hazardous materials technician team comes in, where they are more specialized trained in handling specific chemicals, specific uh, uh, types of equipment, and uh, different responses. All right, the typical hazmat call predominantly is going to be a natural gas leak, uh, underground facilities, uh, individuals that are digging in the ground, rupturing a, a small residential, residential gas line, or even as big as a four inch gas line. We've had basically all those different sizes. Uh, so we're well versed to handle those along with Tico, Tico People's Gas. Uh, but some of the other things, as I mentioned earlier, is anhydrous ammonia is a big concern that we have. Chlorine gas is a huge commodity here in Tampa. And, but honestly, any chemical that comes in either through the port, uh, by rail, by truck, by plane, by ship, we can handle almost anything that comes in. Well, we are actually stationed at one of the oldest fire stations in Florida. Fire station number six was built in 1914, and it houses the hazardous, hazardous materials team for Tampa. Uh, it's in the Palmetto Beach area off of Old 22nd Street, and it's kind of tucked in a, to a small community there. It's a slower station. We don't have the call volume that uh, most other stations have. This allows us to do extra training, uh, to be prepared to respond to a hazardous materials call anywhere in the city. Uh, and also it has very close proximity to the, to the uh, Port of Tampa, which is a big concern that we have. Uh, the Crosstown Expressway, which will get us to the south end of Tampa. And also the uh, interstate system it gets us basically access to anywhere in, in, in Tampa. All right, well this is our vehicle that we call the HIT-6, which is the Hazardous Incidents Team. Uh, it is staffed uh, with one driver engineer out of station number six, along with the engine company that ha typically has four to five individuals staffed on that truck. And this is our specialized vehicle for that we would respond on any hazardous materials calls in Tampa. Uh, some of the things that we have here are various containers of uh, adsorbents and absorbents for different chemicals, petroleum products, different chemicals that we might come in contact with, uh, acids, we have, we have sodium bicarb to neutralize that. Uh, if we have a, a caustic soda, we have other, other chemicals to, to also neutralize that. And moving further down this way, we have some of our more detailed uh, detection equipment that we have here. A Moran Sapphire, which is a, 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 an infrared machine that helps us identify unknown gases and vapors. Uh, of course, a weather station, and then just various equipment for uh, sealing different types of containers, whether it's a chlorine rail car, a one-ton cylinder of chlorine or any type of uh, stand-up cylinder uh, that would have a uh, some type of gas inside of that. Uh, different uh, 
covering equipment that we have for our personnel, what we call PPE, personal protective equipment, because uh, different chemicals may not be compatible with some of our some of our suits, but the suits that we carry pretty much are compatible with most everything that we would come in contact with. Uh, moving further to the back of our truck is, I think you said earlier, Bill, it's just our truck is a great big toolbox. So we try to have tools that will help us to combat any type of situation we might come in contact with. Uh, plugs, gas clamps, uh, things for a gasoline tanker. If it were to roll over, we would help offload that onto another tanker. Um, uh, an, an, another concern that we have is working with flammable liquids and flammable gases. A lot of the basic tools are sparking tools, like you got a claw hammer or shovels and things like that. So we actually have brass tools that we can dig in those, those environments and not have a risk of a spark. So that's kind of important. Also, a, a very critical piece of equipment that we have is we're very concerned about water runoff. Uh, we, when we do expose our individuals, uh, our PPE to certain chemicals, we want to try to wash that off. Well, we don't want that just to go into the environment or into the ground. So one of our high-tech pieces of equipment here are these kiddie pools that we have. Um, we have different sizes for different types of uh, containment that we need to do. Uh, we'll also use these if there's a vehicle that's leaking petroleum, that's leaking gasoline. It's a real quick, easy method just to slide it under the vehicle. And instead of it dripping on the ground, it can just drip right into those. Uh, it's not very glamorous, but it's very functional. Before firefighters place on the chemical protective suits, they first have to go through a brief physical evaluation. This evaluation is done before and after entry into the hazardous zone and documents the firefighter's medical condition.